Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, um, I'm not repetitive, but uh, I have another interesting pen from China to show you. You may recognize this uh, ubiquitous black box, but when we flip it over, we'll see some identification. A pen BBS pen. A 309-2SF. So this is a pen that a number of viewers have said uh, they would like me to review. So I ordered one. Took almost three weeks to get here, a little bit longer than usual. As you can see, the box got a little dented up in shipment, but the pen's in good shape, so I'm happy about that. And here we go, the pen. I love, you know, functional packaging. Uh, you don't need to have anything elaborate from my perspective. So why did I get this pen? Well, number one, I think the blue acrylic is excellent. You know, it's a nice combination, some nice chatoyancy, some little bit of black in there. And the fact that it's also replicated on the blind cap, and it's an unscrew cap like all the pen BBSs are. Almost two turns to unscrew, and then you have a blue section. So Blue, clear, blue, blue. So I think it's a great color combination. And as I did my research, uh, Frank Underwater has done a nice report on these. We'll give you a link to that in the description. They come in 34 colors. Here's the auction that I got and the price that I paid. They're currently running a little bit less than that price. Here's all the colors or a good percentage of the colors. You know, they come in this nice uh, acrylic here, they come in solid acrylic, and they come in some transparent colors where the barrel is, uh, you know, a transparent green or blue or, or something of that nature. So 34 different colors of this pen is just amazing. There's also a lot of other pens, and the pen BBSs come in multiple colors, so if you have a color that you like, and if you like one of these pen BBSs, I certainly strongly recommend that you uh, pick one up before they're gone. Uh, the um, green uh, Lingmo L'Oreal uh, disappeared fairly quickly. So this is uh, just uh, a well-designed pen. It's the, every pen BBS has the same design for the section. It's a little bit of resistance to unscrew it. But once you do, there's a lot of fine threads there, which are nice to seal the barrel. With this a piston filler, you got the same kind of scenario that you do with uh, eyedropper where your ink is full here in the barrel and in touch with all of the section. And there's that nice little O-ring there. Obviously, I'm going to silicone these up, but they feel pretty good right now. The business end of this pen is consistent with the other pen BBS pens that I have. It's a fine nib. It writes to me more like a medium fine. And if you look at that and you'll see it's tipped up a little bit. Reminds you of the feather touch from uh, Schaefer, which was popular in the 30s. All of the pens that I've gotten from Pen BBS are smooth writers, wet writers. They have their own uh, feeds, which is a little unique. You'll see at the bottom of the feed towards the section, that's where it's going to suck up the ink. Um, I think these are excellently made and uh, excellent writing instruments, and also visually ap appealing and engineering-wise very well made and manufactured. So um, I bulb flushed the uh, nib feed in section, but I figured I would pop it out just to show everybody how it looks like. And this is the Pen BBS nib here in the silver tone. Here is a Knox number six nib, and this is a Bulox one, which I recently got from Birmingham Pens. As you can see, it's a pretty standard in the size of a number six nib, so you could hack anything into this, a Goulet nib, a uh, Yovo, Bach. So it gives you a lot of opportunity, you know, options in uh, if you want to change the writing side. One of the things that I noticed in the back of the section, it's just a small opening there. That's unusual. Usually it's a fairly large opening. 
and there might be some inserts. And I thought at one time maybe this was a nib assembly, but it's not. I'd uh, forgotten. I have a lot of pens, so I forget things. But you can see how that ink would flow into this section. And if you turn it over, you'll notice there's that channel that uh, is usually used to fill the pen. But since everything's going to go in and out of that one opening at the end of the section, uh, it's interesting to see how that flow will go. Lots of fins. So let's put this thing back together again. Uh, find a nice blue ink to put in it and put nib to paper. Just to put my pen BBSs in perspective, we have uh, now five in, in my collection. All of them have their unique characteristics, but one thing to keep in mind, they all have the same nib. Um, hard to tell from descriptions as to whether they make different nibs, but they all have the same nib. So I have uh, done a video where I've replaced the nib. One of my viewers commented that hacking wasn't the proper term. I still like it, but we'll say replace. And it works well. You know, the feeds are good on these pens. And the materials are just nice. I mean, they don't skimp on materials. The quality, fit, and finish, and everything else is just nice. You know, there's substantial thickness to it. The pens feel good in the hand. So I just thought I'd show you this. And considering that the 309 is in 34 different colors, I'm just blown away. I think there's like eight or nine in these other pens. And they also make a long kind of like writing pen. Here's, here's that auction. And it also comes in a number of different colors. So I uh, have picked out my ink. Some of you may have guessed that. So again, this is Ink Art Ink, which is a just slightly different formulation from the regular Robert Oster ink. Apparently it has some uh, stabilizers added to it. So I figure that this silver ring here unscrews if you want to remove this to work on the piston, regrease it, or do a thorough cleaning, but I'm not going to do that right now. One of the things to keep in mind is the first turn is a little bit stiff, so this cap is not going to accidentally turn on you. So we're going to put it down to the bottom. As you saw earlier, I've disassembled this. It's all clean, so it's ready to ink up. This bottle is, is about a third empty. So one of the things with bottles like this is, can I put the pen in deep enough to pull up ink and it looks like it'll fit? So one of the things with bottles like this is, uh, will the pen touch the bottom. I'm going to get some ink on my fingers, but that's okay. So we're going to do one draw up and we'll see how that fills. That's a pretty good fill for the first draw, but those of you that know me know I'm going to at least do two. We're going to expel that. It's another way to really flush the section, get everything saturated well with ink, nice clean fresh ink. So that's even a fuller draw. So the piston works extremely well. We're going to clean this puppy off and uh, see how this nib puts down this soda pop blue ink. Lengthwise, the pen feels fine in the hand. It's a decent length. It's fairly light. It's about 20 grams and the cap is about 8 grams. So one of the things that Pen BBS did with this design is it actually posts relatively deeply, very securely, and it doesn't post on the blind cap. So therefore, this doesn't turn the cap. So that's a great design. When I first uh, wrote with this pen, the section feels a little bit on the small side, but dimension-wise, it's pretty average. We'll give you those dimensions. It's like from 9 to 11 millimeters. The threads aren't sharp. I mean, you feel them. There's a slight step up. Uh, at the end of the, but you can hold it wherever you want. I mean, there's no problem that the balance posted is fine. I mean, I probably would write with this posted. So let's uh, see how this nib puts down ink.
This writes like all the pen BBS pens I've had. There's a nice amount of feedback. It glides. And because the nib has a little bit of a bend to it, you know, if you lay down on about a, you know, more than a 45 degree angle, closer to the paper, it's a fairly medium to broad line, but if you raise the pen up, the line gets finer. I'm not certain that that's something that I could do for normal writing, but as an everyday pen, this thing would work fine. The nib has a little bit of softness to it. At one time in these reviews, I thought the SF meant soft fine. But, you know, it's not something you'd want to do on a regular basis, but it does really gush out a decent amount of ink. You know, I think the feeds that they use in these pens are excellent. Quality is consistently good. So hopefully you've enjoyed this look at another pen BBS. I highly recommend it. So if we're going to rate a pen, I'm going to a 9. Um, it writes extremely well, writes consistently well, extremely well made. And also the other thing that I look at is even though there's a, a lot of piston filler Chinese pens on the market now, they've certainly done as usual some interesting things. I think this is a pen that will last a considerably long time. You got your nice uh, big cap band here, which is going to stop any type of cracking. There's your 309 on the cap band. I think the acrylics are very nice. The clip is extremely functional. I'm certain this uh, finial at the top would unscrew if you needed to take that apart, but you know I see no reason to do that now. So overall, I'm extremely pleased with this. Am I going to buy the other 33 colors? I don't think so, but you know I made a pick on this one, and I'm glad I did. And who knows when they might run out. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. A look at another Chinese pen and another pen BBS pen. I'm just amazed and impressed with what they're doing. Uh, Frank's website, he said they're no longer working with Ling Mo, so that may explain uh, the different designs in this one. But the acrylics are still pretty nice. So may you have excellent pen, ink, paper, writing experiences, put your thoughts on paper, share them with people. It's a great way to communicate. So until the next video, this is the end of this one. So I will say bye till later. And Soda Pop Blue is a nice blue.